Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 20th of February. Indian authorities make preparations on war footing ahead of US President Trump's visit. US envoy Khalilzad discuss a Taliban deal with the re-elected Afghan President Khani. And parents of Pakistani students stuck in China's virus epicenter went anger at ministers. And now for all the details. India's foreign ministry on Thursday said that there is no ban on travel to or from China amid the coronavirus outbreak. The ministry said India has also decided to send an aircraft consignment of medical supplies on a relief flight to China's coronavirus hit Wuhan city. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Ravish Kumar on Thursday said that there is no ban on travel to or from China at a time when the death toll from the deadly coronavirus has crossed more than 2,000 in mainland China. Addressing a weekly media briefing, Kumar said India has also decided to send an aircraft consignment of medical supplies on a relief flight to coronavirus hit Wuhan, which will also bring Indian nationals who could not board earlier two flights. Uh, the advisory is regarding to and from travel to China. It remains in place. And this is purely to maintain public health so that infection does not spread to different parts of India. Uh, as I clarified last time, that there is no ban on travel to China or from China. India's national carrier Air India had evacuated around 640 Indians, including seven Maldivians from Wuhan, in two separate flights earlier this month. A total of 406 people out of them, who were kept at a quarantine facility in northern India, were discharged this week after medical reports confirmed they were not infected. U.S. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump will be on a two-day state visit to India next week at the invitation of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Ahead of their visit, security has been tightened outside Motera Stadium in Prime Minister Modi's home province, Gujarat, where Trump will be attending an event. Ahead of U.S. President Donald Trump's India visit next week, Security has been tightened outside Motera Stadium in Western Ahmedabad city, where he will be attending an event. Barricades have been set up with policemen manning the entrance and vicinity of the stadium. The city's beautification has been given special emphasis by the municipal corporation, in particular the 13-mile stretch, which the delegates will be crossing during their visit to the city. The dignitaries together will inaugurate the world's largest cricket stadium in Motera, which has a sitting capacity of over 100,000. So, it feels very good. If two powerful men come together, it will be very adventurous. It will see the whole world, yes, two powerful men. Trump is slated to address a Mahmood crowd, which is expected to turn up for an event at the stadium on the lines of the Howdy Modi function that was addressed by US President Trump and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Houston in September last year. Meanwhile, in northern Uttar Pradesh province, verification of houses, shops and hotels are being carried out by the police near the 17th century marble monument Taj Mahal and on the main route which is expected to be taken up by the visiting dignitary. US President and First Lady Melania Trump will be on a two-day state visit to India from February 24 at the invitation of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani was declared the winner of a disputed presidential poll held last year. A day later, U.S. Special Envoy Zelmay Khalilzad and Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on Wednesday discussed a U.S. deal with Taliban militants on a week-long reduction in violence.
यू एस स्पेशल ऑनवॉय जालमे खलिलजाद एंड अफगान प्रेजिडेंट अशरफ घनी ऑन वेंसडे डिस्कस्ड यू एस डील विद तालिबान मिलिटेंट्स ऑन अ वीक लॉन्ग रिडक्शन इन वायलेंस बोथ डिस्कस्ड सिग्निफिकेंट रिडक्शन इन वायलेंस इन डिटेल्स एज वेल एज द अप्रोचेज द गवर्नमेंट शुड टेक टू मैनेज द प्रोसेस द अफगान प्रेजिडेंशियल पैलेस सेड इन अ स्टेटमेंट द मीटिंग केम अ डे आफ्टर घनी वॉज डिक्लेयर्ड विनर ऑफ अ डिस्प्यूटेड प्रेजिडेंशियल पोल The US Taliban deal was struck in protracted negotiations in Doha and it was announced last week after a meeting between US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Ghani and US Defense Secretary Mark Esper in Munich. However, Ghani's main rival Abdullah Abdullah, who came in second, rejected the poll result and vowed to form his own government, threatening new political turmoil as the United States strives to seal a US troop withdrawal deal with Taliban militants. Apart from Abdullah, other presidential candidates Rehmatullah Nabil, Abdul Rashid Dostum have all rejected the election result, calling it start of a new crisis in the country. While United Nations said it would encourage the electoral management bodies to address the candidates understandable desire to have clarity on decisions taken related to audits and recounts the european union said it considered the election process to have reached a conclusion moving on mutahida qaumi movement founder altaf hussain who was recently announced as the head of the sindhu desh government in exile has said that people of sindh province in pakistan want liberation from the slavery of punjab imperialism mudahida qaumi movement or mqm founder altaf hussain has said that people of sindh province in pakistan want liberation from the slavery of punjab imperialism and invited people of sindh to stand against the atrocities In a joint address with Safdar Sirki, the head of JS Sindh Tehreek, Hussain accused that Punjab has occupied all the resources of Sindh and now permanent residents of Sindh want liberation from this slavery and occupation. Safdar Sirki asked people to join the movement. Sindh ka bachcha bachcha hai ratban. Punjab ki gulami se nijab chahta hai. Main nahi chahta hai. नहीं चाहता हूं कि एक भी पंजाबी छावनी एक भी पंजाबी पुलिस एक भी पंजाबी रेंजर्स सिंध में हो पंजाबी सिंधियों सिंधियों उठो सिंधियों नौजवानों तुम उठो महाजनों उठो मिलो एक दूसरे से जगा हो Mohajir leader Altaf Hussain was recently announced as the head of the Sindhu Desh government in exile. Sindhu Desh is an idea of a separate homeland for Sindhis proposed by Sindhi nationalist parties. Sindhis and Mohajirs have for long claimed to have been suffering discrimination and human rights violations at the hands of Pakistani state and its army. Angry parents of Pakistani students stuck in China's Hubei province, the epicenter of coronavirus outbreak, confronted government ministers in capital Islamabad on Wednesday. They demanded that children be evacuated as Pakistan ruled out to bringing them home, telling that students' welfare was better off in China. Angry parents of Pakistani students stuck in China's Hubei province, the center of coronavirus outbreak, confronted government ministers at a meeting on Wednesday, demanding their children are evacuated. Pakistan has so far ruled out bringing home more than 1,000 students in Hubei province and its capital Wuhan, where more than 2,000 deaths from the outbreak of the flu-like virus have been recorded. Pakistan's health minister Zafar Mirza briefed parents for the first time on Wednesday. telling them the students welfare was better off in china and pakistan did not have adequate facilities to quarantine them if they returned but the briefing was interrupted by the parents <laughs> हुकूमत किस बात से डरी है हुकूमत क्या इमरान खान इस बात का डिसीजन नहीं ले सकता कि पीआईए की फ्लाइट उठाए अपने बच्चों को इवैक्यूएट करे और उनको वहां पे लाए क्वारंटीन पीरियड पूरा करे वहां पे कर ले या यहां पे कर ले उसका जितना एक्सपेंस है पेरेंट्स पे करने के लिए तैयार हैं आपने खुद देखा अपनी आंखों से लोगों का क्या हाल है पेरेंट्स का क्या हाल है लोगों को खशे पड़ रही हैं जो वो अपने बच्चों को देखते हैं हालतें तंदुरुस्त बच्चे ऐसे लगते हैं जैसे ये बीमार हैं 
More than 400 parents traveled from around the country to attend the meeting at a school in capital Islamabad and around 100 protested with placards outside after the meeting, blocking a nearby road. Families have expressed growing frustration as the death toll in China mounts, pointing to other countries, including neighboring India and Bangladesh, evacuating their citizens. A Chinese female tourist who was found infected last month with the novel coronavirus in Sri Lanka was discharged from hospital on Wednesday after being fully cured, Sri Lanka's health ministry said. Sri Lanka had suspended its policy of granting visa on arrival for Chinese travellers following the case. A Chinese female tourist who was found infected last month with the novel coronavirus or COVID-19 in Sri Lanka was discharged from the hospital near Colombo on Wednesday after being fully cured, Sri Lanka's health ministry said. Chinese national in her 40s, the lone patient to test positive for the coronavirus in the island nation so far, bid farewell to the hospital staff and was greeted by Health Minister Pavitra Wanyarachi and other health officials after she left the ward. The Chinese tourist had arrived in Sri Lanka on January 19 and was tested positive on January 27 for coronavirus after falling ill. Sri Lanka has suspended its policy of granting visa on arrival for Chinese travellers following the case. The new flu-like virus, first reported in the Chinese city of Wuhan, has killed more than 2,000 people in China alone. Scores of sadhus or ascetics arrived on Thursday at the famous Pashupatina temple in Nepal's capital Kathmandu a day ahead of the Hindu festival of Mahashivratri. The World Heritage Site of Pashupatina Temple is dedicated to Lord Shiva, the god of destruction of evil. Scores of sadhus or ascetics, most of them with their bodies dabbed in ashes and unkempt hair, were seen thronging on Thursday at the famous Pashupatina Temple in Nepal's capital Kathmandu, a day ahead of the Hindu festival of Mahashivaratri. The festival, which literally means the Great Night of Shiva, is celebrated to mark the occasion of Lord Shiva's marriage to his consort, Goddess Parvati. In Nepal, Mahashivratri every year witnesses thousands of ascetics and devotees flocking and offering prayers at the World Heritage Site of Pashupatina Temple, which is dedicated to Lord Shiva, the god of destruction of evil. <laughs> More than 5,000 ascetics from India and Nepal were expected to reach the Holy Pashupatina temple area by Thursday for the festival which will be celebrated on February 21 this year. A man in southern India who claims to be a devotee of Donald Trump has transformed his modest home into a shrine to the U.S. president. He has installed a life-size statue of Trump at his home to which he performs religious-like rituals. One of Donald Trump's biggest fans has turned his home in rural India into a shrine to the U.S. president, which makes his devoted supporters back home look lukewarm by comparison. Busa Krishna says he began worshipping Trump four years ago when the U.S. president appeared to him in a dream. The real estate salesman claims that the vision was the start of a run of good fortune, which led to him turning his modest home into a temple of adoration. He installed a life-size statue of Trump, which he adorns with flowers and walls of incense smoke, performing religious-like rituals. <laughs> Donald Trump, who like Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, has a reputation as an unbashed populist. He is expected to make his first trip to India on February 24. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline. 
and follow us on Twitter at S Asia Newsline. It's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.